Speaking of property values, what do you figure a house in this subdivision is valued at? It's Garden City, right on the river. Good spot. It's appropriately named Riverside Village. But ask anyone who's been around for a few more decades than they're willing to admit, and they might remember when it was called Strawberry Glen. That's back before it uh, had any houses, too. And Strawberry Glen was actually an airstrip with airplanes and all of that in the heart of Garden City. A little bit different than it looks today. And thanks to a recent donation to the Idaho State Historical Society, that historic airport's history will now be preserved. Our Andrew Bartline has the story. Well, actually, uh, we're having a slight technical issue, so we are going to hear from uh, Andrew and that whole story coming up in a little bit later. I will tell you this, Andrew and our photographer, Kevin, they were out on the streets in the Garden City area today, kind of just going around trying to figure out exactly what it looks like. And I am told, after your great patience, we have it right now. Andrew, take it away. Driving by, you could miss it. I hope not. The Lakeview Golf Course, it's one of those things that's tucked in a subdivision. <laughs> But ask Virginia Morris. <laughs> or the range was too far out. And there's always a story to share if you're looking. It's been here a while and was called Cherry Lane for a long time. So it's really taken on a new life. And I think that's what's fun about these kinds of places is being considered an old timer, which I never thought I'd be considered. It's just fun to have these memories brought back. The memories, they live where we do. They live on the roads that we drive. They live through the signs that we read, whether we're looking or not. And that we get to be a part of that is really exciting and inspiring. Nicole Ingolterra works at the Idaho State Historical Society, where this sign shows a garden city before, well, the city. It shows really beautifully, uh, I think, some of the ways that our cities change. And um, so with Garden City in particular, that uh, this is now no longer an airfield, pretty um, obviously it is a, it's a subdivision. And it's part of history tied up in a decades long game of lost and found, which easily could have been a game of finders keepers. Well, it was like Frodo. I had the ring <laughs> and I knew it needed a home, but I could not get anybody to help me find a place for it. Or it, people wanted it, but maybe not for the right reason. Virginia received the sign from a friend who inherited it from family. He asked me if I, I would find a home for it. Otherwise, he was gonna take it to the dump because he had no room for it. But the Historical Society, they said, bring it on. In the beginning, it had it, it had been, I think, called Major Airfield at one point in time. If I'm remembering correctly, there was a helicopter firm uh, appropriated the airfield or purchased the airfield at some point uh, in the 60s. And that's when it got the name Strawberry Glen. And that's what stuck for the last almost 20 years of its life. Old photographs show a wide straightaway shot right down the center of the development we know today. But the old maps, they tell a better story. Between the pilot jargon and measurements, there's a fair warning to steer clear of the chicken coops. You know, it's, it's the story of many cities that as there are more people moving in and as there are, uh, you know, <laughs> a need for more homes, uh, that uh, something like an airfield in the middle of a metropolitan area becomes a little less attractive. They're lost, but at the same time, there are people who keep that memory of, of what, our, what our places and spaces looked like um, before. You could miss it. Is that a gimme? Come on, you guys. Or you could be the one looking. I'm glad I did it. I'm glad it's over though. I'm glad it's found a good home. If you grew up here in the 50s and 60s, it's very nostalgic to hear about all the places that used to be. And uh, it sparks memories of childhood that, you know, it's, it's pretty complicated times we live in. So we get some, just a chance to go back to our childhood memories when things were less hectic and less divisive and you know I think it brought people together frankly I really do and I do want to thank Virginia for taking time out of her golf outing today to talk to us but it was a small ask from us considering she spent three months to finally get that sign a proper home with the Idaho State Historical Society and her reference to bringing people together is directed at a Facebook post 89 people commented on this often sharing stories about what they remember from that airfield or any sort of family connection that they may have had the Idaho State Historical Society will keep this in preservation Joe and maybe sometime we will see this on display soon okay so so I know that you and our photojournalist, Kevin Esslinger, <laughs> you're a walk around the neighborhood today. You're trying to find people that might have remembered it. Could you visualize a runway being in this neighborhood? Yeah, so, I mean, it's like any subdivision. It's all windy and stuff, right? There's like one road. I think it's West Riverside Drive. 
and actually quote me on that. I'm almost positive that's what it is. All right, I will. It's a straight shot in what's otherwise a super windy neighborhood. We're like, this was it. This was totally the runway. We got our maps out on our phone. It lined up perfectly with what the, the map is on the sign. So that was kind of cool today. Who knows what they'll have in this building 100 years from now. Andrew, thank we'll you very out. much. Could be an airport. 208 rolls on right after this.